Okay, so it's a pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Raima Wolkenhaar from uh, Munster, Quantum Fields and non commutative Geometries. This is his title. Raima. Okay. Well, thanks, and so thanks, Masoud, and all other organizers for inviting me to this wonderful event. So I was here at the workshop in 2008, which was mentioned uh, several times, and uh, so uh, it's really an extremely great pleasure to be back and see this enormous uh, development that has been made since then. Okay, so my talk is about quantum fields. They didn't appear so often in this uh, conference, but okay, that's all that I can offer. Um, let's see. Okay, so quantum field theory, you have various systems of axioms, which tell what, what you have to think about, take your favorite choice, and more or less all of them agree that quantum fields are distributions. So distributions are in principle very nice objects. We had them in many talks uh, at this conference, uh, but they do not want to be multiplied. So, but uh, for concrete theory, this is what we want. We want some nonlinear things because this is interaction, this is life. So, okay. And to, um, so here is a formulation which uh, recently became, or has made absolutely spectacular progress, stochastic concrete theory, uh, stochastic quantization, uh, because here you see really the difference between linear and nonlinear, which in other formulations is not so clear. Um, so forget first the charm in red. Take uh, here this uh, essentially the heat. So we have a heat equation driven by white noise, and T is not our time here. T is some fictitious extra time. So and then um, well, this uh, white white noise is uh, has negative regularity, and then okay, depending on dimension, this dimension two and above, also you are by your solution uh, will be a distribution. So that's all right, but now switch on this uh, nonlinearity and then well, you see that immediately uh, there, there's a problem. So it can be that uh, uh, while well, the term which you add is more singular than the white noise you started with. And then you are completely uh, out of track. Well, this is just an example. Um, phi to the four is in the action, and then we differentiate to get the field equation, and then phi cube is just an example. So, okay, means uh, one has to work. So it makes sense, and this is this work is described by these double dots uh, left and right. So this means work, and the work is uh, harder if you increase the dimension. So, um, well, what you essentially do is uh, you have to make a fine dimension problem by regularization and then some about the limit. I will not discuss this too much. Uh, so just one uh, yeah, information. Uh, there's a recent landmark result by Eisenman and Dumnil Copin, unfortunately a disappointing one, which uh, tell us uh, uh, whatever you do in a four-dimensional situation, you will fail. There's absolutely no chance to make sense of, of this equation. Um, well, this is what they proved. Uh, this phi uh, to the four model in four dimension, uh, well, well, you have to construct this, this thing here somehow. And then, well, you have to introduce uh, cutoffs and so on, uh, finite volume, finite lattice spacing, and then you go to the limit, um, and then you see in the limit, your parameter lambda, its coupling constant, must be zero. So you get in the limit the so linear. The yes, right. Okay. Yes. And this is called triviality. Okay, so, um, well, there, there, these physicists tell us there's something, namely, um, they have arguments that young Mills theory should exist in four dimensions. But uh, this is one, another one of the Millennium Prize problems. And um, here, uh, with this different to Riemann hypothesis, 
there's absolutely no, no access at the moment to this. So this is out of reach for, for next century. So you see, um, you know, this is a very uncomfortable situation. So either it uh, does not work, it's trivial, or it's infinitely hard. Yeah. Okay, so that's the situation, concrete serving four dimensions. So what can we do? Um, well, probably, you guess. Um, well, we are here in non geometry, so let's do, let's try to do everything on a non canvas space. So this, uh, this idea came up in the 90s, so especially uh, by work of Alain with uh, Martin Damless and Albert Schwartz, who's, who proposed, uh, well, to look at M-theory, this is an 11 dimensional theory, and you have to compactify it to go to four dimensions. And uh, okay, they showed that you can do this on non torus. torus. And then there are other indications from string theory, um, it makes sense to look at quantum fields uh, on non spaces. And since then, uh, okay, a lot has been done. And so partly I, I explain something. Um, so I should say, so what, uh, what can be done is um, similar to, uh, to what I had previously. So this is uh, the osterwald schrader um, Euclidean approach by measures. But I should say we should, uh, absolutely not expect to satisfy any axioms. This is too early. Um, so we just play around and we want to learn, maybe. Um, that, uh, so how to build these uh, products of distributions. And um, so, um, well, the, okay, there will be a sort of Laplace type operator. So we will build this uh, scalar model. And uh, well, that has spectral dimension, and uh, so so roughly the linear theory is uh, is as bad as in on the commutative world. It doesn't see a difference, but it, it makes a difference when we come to this uh, this product because then we have a different algebra to work with, and uh, it's really uh, that things work better than on manifolds. That's so. That's a no. That's an excellent point. Yes, uh, this is not as good as Young Mills in a certain sense. So the beta function here is is zero, but uh, this has another advantage that also in the infrared here we don't have problems. So therefore, it's in some sense it's easier. But the idea is the same. non commutativity helps. Good. Um, what? So, on, so, okay, so here I described the, the, well, the general approach. Uh, that's an well, important uh, result in harmonic analysis for the minimum steering. So you start with a Frechy algebra, so it's nuclear as a vector space. And then uh, there is this uh, important theorem. So you consider um, functionals, uh, F, uh, which are well, continuous, normalized, and uh, most importantly, of positive type. So it means such a positivity holds. And then the theorem tells us there is a unique uh, Borel measure on the dual, such that your uh, given uh, functional f is the Fourier transform of the measure. So this is the best one one can have. Um, okay, and then there, there are plenty of choices. Uh, for such functionals, uh, but they all correspond to a linear theory. So, um, so for instance, uh, take any uh, well, continuous uh, inner product uh, on your well, on your vector space first. Uh, take then here the Gaussian, and uh, by uh, old result of Schur, you automatically are of positive type. So okay, there are many choices, and what we do now is. Um, so, so roughly, we, we take very specific algebra. So we take the final rank operators of Hilbert space, but close it in a Frechet topology. So in particular, we have uh, these uh, matrix units. And then we take an inner product, which makes them orthogonal. But uh, to have some flexibility, we do not normalize them to, to one, but we put weights. So there's one uh, n, this will appear or will be relevant later important is we have uh, increasing sequence of positive reals. 
So roughly, they simulate uh, the spectrum of Laplacian. And then uh, we get roughly here this inverse Laplacian, and it's exactly of the same structure as we do on the manifold. So the resonant of the Laplacian. Okay, so then we have a nice measure, and uh, here is, uh, well, it's probably expected. So the, the spectral dimension of this uh, say the sequence uh, will play a prominent role. And uh, so it should be true, but uh, I don't have a proof. So if someone knows the proof or if you can easily do this, then please tell me. So uh, it's uh, so in, on the manifold. It is known that uh, this this support up to uh, an epsilon of the measure is not the whole space, uh, the, this temper distribution, but it's uh, supported on, on Bessoff spaces, so subspaces, and something similar should be true here as well. And um, well, but in any case, uh, we are distributions and we get the same problem of multiplying it. So, um, one remark so far, uh, everything is on just vector space structure. There was no product uh, whatsoever, only we have these matrix units to have bases and declare them as orthogonal. Um, the product comes now. And, and here uh, starts the difficulty. Um, so, what in principle one should do this thing. So, uh, Define such a product of distributions, uh, so the nth power and the nth trace. Um, okay, it's some suggestion, but of course this does not work because um, well, this is a tensor product of files applied to this tensor product, but here this is uh, by no means fresh. So this cannot be uh, well, uh, it's just a suggestive mutation, but this uh, does not work, and well, that's reason why we have problems. And well, we do what, what everyone does also in the ordinary world. Uh, so we restrict now here the summation uh, to a finite one. Then we uh, study moments uh, of this, well, then well, this is the measure. And uh, then there is this business of optimization theory that uh, you classify your moments into dangerous and, and harmless ones. The dangerous one, you have to adjust bundles, then if you go here to limit, that they stay constant. This are normalization conditions, and the others should have a limit, but this is work. In principle, that's the idea. Good. Um, I wouldn't say it's automatic, but... Uh, There, there are many, many open points here. Good. So, okay, now let's do this. And look, also, well, the suggestion would be look uh, at such, uh, if you regularize, then everything's okay. Uh, this, uh, this was our like, Gaussian measure defined by the inner product. And uh, so remember this inner product has, uh, uh, ah, sorry, sorry, and, uh, Um, so there's this important factor one over n, which now becomes important. So, and then we have delta functions. Okay, so, um, well, the measure has the property that um, your moments, if you, okay, you rewrite everything as a, uh, now view them as moments of this Gaussian measure, uh, then this factorized in product of pairs, the pairs, uh, pair you write as an edge, and every edge has a factor one over n from the rule. Then, um, okay, then because you have a factor n in front of every such term, so this uh, is graphically a vertex. So a term traced by to the p is a p-valent vertex and it has a factor n in front. So now all what remains is to declare, well, uh, we have conical deltas with some uh, summation remains, we take out the factor n also. So then, uh, okay, the remark is that um, 
the faces are the most important things. They carry label. Label is first the matrix index, uh, namely of, of our matrix units here of this uh, orthonormal basis in Hilbert space. Uh, but it's better to uh, label them by our sequence EK. So, um, so it's important that I, oh, the markers. Uh, for every vertex, we have an N. For every edge, we have an sorry, For every face, we have an N. And for every edge, we have an inverse. And this makes the Euler characteristic. So uh, the almost trivial observation is uh, all your, uh, your moments of, of this measure, they come with the absolutely natural grading by the Euler characteristic. And this is for something which is not available in the commuted world, and this changes everything. Okay, one remark, uh, this, uh, this series here has absolutely no chance to converge. It simply cannot. So this is a form of power series. Uh, the reason is, uh, okay, yeah, okay, standard argument. If, say, P is down from below, then negative sign is all right. But if you change here, then the sign of N, you are in enormous trouble. So it, it cannot converge. Yeah, so it doesn't well, um, so the, it's, it's more subtle. Uh, if you restrict to every order in the Euler characteristic, then it does converge. But uh, summing over all topologies, this does not converge. Good. So, okay. Next step is uh, dyson schwinger equations. Uh, they are another word for integration by parts. So you have your measure and then uh, Write d by d d phi of something, and if you arrange the something carefully, you can do many, infinitely many relations you have just for free. So, and uh, then, uh, well, we have this grading by the Euler characteristic, and your Dyson Schwinger equation inherit this grading, and you can use it. So, and so we get relations between moments, and they, uh, well, they, they are also graded. And uh, so the idea is you represent your cumulants as uh, well on the, the subhuman surface with boundary. And the role of the boundary is uh, it carries uh, vertices. Um, maybe I go back. So, yeah. Okay. These, uh, they play the role of additional one valent vertices, every phi of A, which sits on the boundary. So that's the idea. Exactly. So and you have to distribute them. Your boundary can have several comp components and you have to distribute these n uh, one volume vertices somehow. Okay, and also the Euler characteristic depends uh, on it in some sense. Um, right. um, yeah, later you will see in examples that, uh, so I told you uh, the phases are labeled by our uh, or sequence EK, but it's then possible when you have the equations to meromorphically extend it in some way to um, well, complexify it in a reasonable way. This will be important. Okay, so um, then if you look carefully, um, so the all character is such that uh, it cannot increase, it always uh, goes down. So it means if you look at the highest Euler characteristic, which is the disk sphere with one boundary, uh, this can only depend on the sphere. It cannot, uh, if you have some, well, handle, uh, this, it's still there, yeah, you can destroy it. So therefore what you get, uh, you will get a complicated equation for the disk amplitude, which, okay, you have to solve. This is complicated, but okay, suppose you can do this. Then, uh, every, in principle, everything else is easy. So it turns out um, that uh, when, so whenever you have a topology and you add further one valent vertices to the boundary, this is purely algebraic. Uh, there's absolutely no difficulty in doing this. And at least in one example, I hope to convince you that this seems to be connected to problems in free probability. So because you don't change the, uh, the topology, uh, everything is, is uh, non-causing and so forth. 
So the highly interesting part is when you uh, decrease your Euler characteristic. And this is a remarkably uh, universal structure uh, which appears there, which runs under the name of topology recursion, uh, discovered some 15 years ago by Inna and Orotin. And uh, it's almost automatically coming uh, forever, whatever your, your concrete theory model is. And this is totally fascinating because it has many, many relations to well, intersection theory, uh, moduli space of curves, and integrability and stuff like this. Um, I have a, uh, okay, a larger section on this, at least give some ideas. Good. So, okay, um, this is more or less the structure, and now we look at uh, all this uh, for, for two examples. First will be the uh, pi cube model, and then later uh, the pi cube form. So let's start with pi cube. Uh, so this is here, the discharge in red. But uh, for concrete theory, we have to add all sorts of counter charms, and then we, uh, depending on spectral dimension, in this makes sense up to dimension six, but it's not a, a good concrete theory model because the potential is not bounded from below. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, it's all right. Can, I can go to dimension six, and then one needs all these other terms to make sense of it. But okay, let's ignore the blue terms and only focus on, on, the, on the red one. And this can be done in dimension zero, which is perfectly nice. And then we get exactly this famous conservative model, the matrix area function, uh, which, uh, well, which had a tremendous importance. Um, well, there was this conjecture by Witten that the generating series of intersection numbers satisfies the, the KDV hierarchy. And Konsevich proved this uh, shortly later by going to some intermediate step. And this intermediate step is this matrix ERI function from intersection theory to matrix ERI. And for matrix ERI to KDV is relatively straightforward. So and we look at this intermediate step this uh, matrix area function. Um, right, so, okay, it's, it's just you can hear this, uh, this potential. Otherwise, this exactly the same um, inner product that, which you had with this one over EK plus CL. Good, so okay, um, what one should do, okay, but here um, we follow a strategy which is for instance, uh, Beautifully explained in, in our book, but uh, it's, it's certainly older. Okay, you take uh, special moments. Uh, you insert here, um, well, it's important diagonal um, elements. So diagonal matrix elements. And then you expand in, in the genus and you get uh, certain objects which we call W, G, and then A1 up to N. And uh, okay, for technical reasons, the AI term is different. And uh, this symbol with a C means we go to the cumulant. So if you go to take the measure, then okay, then you have to do this uh, Möbius inversion to get to the cumulant. Uh, this is supposed to be done here. Um, um, yes, so um, the remark is what I said earlier, um, something more complicated. So the difference here, so, um, so essentially here we have, um, everything has to be looked or understood in the sense of permutations. Here we have uh, permutation which consists of n cycles and each cycle has length one. This is different. Here we have uh, one cycle of length n. So and this uh, can always be reduced uh, to uh, the situation that we have one cycle of length one, which is this uh, w with one index, which we have before, and everything else is algebraic. So this continues. Uh, it's only more complicated with, uh, we have, can have k cycles and arbitrary lengths, so this is easy. So it's enough to understand these things. Then we understand everything. Okay, so and then one has to work, as I said, integration, integration by parts uh, to derive such a well, family of equations for these Ws. Um, okay, straightforward. Um, so 
So, and the interesting case is G equals zero, N equals zero, where you get here, uh, you get here a square. So it's W sub A up there, uh, zero squared, and um, well, it's whatever it is. So this equation can be solved. So it's from remarkable, so it was solved by riemann hilbert techniques uh, by Makienko and Simonov. And here's the solution. Uh, it uh, introduces a certain implicitly defined parameter C, and uh, now I can make this uh, connection to higher dimension. Um, these, all these sums here and here in general will not converge. So in order to make them converge, we have to introduce all these uh, counter terms which, which you had somewhere, and then uh, they modify this equation and also what is this here in such a way that these sums, they are finite. So this is the purpose of uh, then randomization. Okay, so this is the, uh, well, the disk amplitude, uh, uh, W0 with one index, and uh, if you look carefully, all other equations, they are fine. You, well, you increase the genus or down in Euler characteristic, and then you get an equation which is linear in the highest uh, Euler characteristic, and it only needs information which you already know. So it's then, so, okay, you have to solve it. And the main step to do it is to observe, well, um, we better give here these combinations, square root of E L squared plus C, we better give them another name. Let's call them Z and uh, others also, but here in, whenever we have here the summation, this we should keep. So in other words, this equation somehow extends or complexifies to the equation here, where I have uh, everywhere uh, complex sets. Um, and uh, I keep my, my epsilons whenever I have a sum. So if you now specify, uh, if you take uh, with this definition, you set the set, your sets and set i into the epsilons, you get previous equation. But now uh, this is much more powerful because you see by induction that this defines uh, meromorphic functions and then we have the full power of complex analysis available. So before um, there's maybe not much to do, but this equation is, is beautiful and one, one can do much. So for instance, here one can, uh, um, it's relatively easy to compute the, the next examples, W02, 03. All right, and then um, maybe I should end it. Okay, and now when uh, it took some time to come to this experience that the right formulation is, is the one which I show here. So one finds that uh, these Ws, they are odd in every variable and you write oddness in a very strange way. Um, the sum of take z and minus z is zero. And then uh, downstairs, uh, okay, this is use, and you convert the previous equation into a new form. And now in, in the first line, uh, so, so it's roughly, uh, it's the sum of all decomposition of your Riemann surface. Okay, uh, to build, uh, or we go up, uh, we, to build a Riemann surface of genus G and mark points, you can do two things. So either you take uh, one genus less, and two more boundaries, and you glue them, then you make a handle. Or you uh, have two disjoint Riemann surfaces, and uh, then you just connect two boundaries, and then the genus is additive. So this is the first line. Okay, and then the, the one plays around, and one finds some, some right inside, and uh, I slightly changed uh, the variables. So uh, previously I had heads, and now in most cases uh, this is the same except for W01 and 2 they, they are different. So, but this comes uh, naturally. Okay, so now um, we are done because we, we are happy that topological recursion is available and uh, TR tells us whenever we have this, we know the solution. There's no more work and I briefly sketch uh, what, uh, well, how this works. Okay, um, well, this was absolutely great observation by Inar Antoine that um, 
there are many, many matrix models, but they formulate them in the right way, you see similarities. The similarity is that uh, when you have to specify your initial data, they call the spectral graph. And when you have this, then uh, everything else is a completely universal picture. So you, you split it in the difficulty in two parts, the spectral curve and, uh, and the recursion. So spectral curve is uh, specified by two ramified coverings of uh, P1 by Riemann surface. And uh, the curve means uh, you get certain polynomial equation and this, this is the curve. And then there is so-called Bergman kernel, all right? And uh, okay, let me, yeah, okay. What, what, what's done is on next uh, slide. I just want to mention that uh, immediately later, it was noticed that uh, this uh, approach is not limited uh, to matrix models. It appears uh, in many, many situations. So a few important ones are uh, the uh, recursion for moduli spaces of all the hyperbolic surfaces, also the, the, the volumes. Then there is this ELSV formula, which expresses simple Howitz numbers in terms of integrals over the moduli space of curves. And uh, more recently, uh, there is a huge business which is called cohomology field theories, which uh, in and the technical assumptions uh, also fits exactly into this situation. Okay, so here is uh, what is, uh, okay. Okay, let's suppose we have this um, and uh, okay. Okay, then it defines W01 and W02. So important is here the sum over the fiber. So X is uh, say, uh, yeah, d plus one to, to one, so it's it's ramified, and you sum over the fiber so, uh, in, in one of these variables, and then because it's symmetric, uh, you project downstairs. You get function uh, of x of z, uh, l. and uh, well, uh, upstairs it's it's ramified, so two two, two branches intersect or, or whatever, and uh, they have singularities, but downstairs nothing special happens. So it means uh, you should expect, and in, well, in all cases that's well, that works, uh, that uh, these, uh, these sums or function of x, z, they are just holomorphic at, at, at the branch points. Okay, then uh, there, there's a beautiful calculation uh, which shows whenever you have this, uh, you immediately get a formula which computes you uh, this wgn in terms of those which you already have. So done. And the, as I said, there are hundreds of examples where precisely this works. Okay, I should say uh, uh, in most of the cases, there is a certain technical condition satisfied and then everything is, is way easier. Good, some remarks. Uh, yeah, uh, concept model is, is this curve essentially, um, okay. Con relating it to, but, but because, uh, Z square is uh, the generic case of a ramification locally, and therefore you can locally everything reduce to conservage, and then you get uh, the, uh, that uh, the Laurent series expansion of these Ws uh, about any ramification point can be expressed uh, in terms of intersection numbers of psi and kappa classes on the moduli space of extremely complex curves. Okay, if then remark if this uh, project does not hold, you get an extension it's called blocked topology recursion, and the Python 4 model needs this extension, just for a mark. And uh, okay, there is a straightforward way to connect it to KP tau function integrability. And another remark um, was a recently important development uh, where you can, with X and Y, you can build this symplectic form. It was conjectured that you have some symplectic invariance, and the missing piece was the exchange between x and y, which was recently understood. So, uh, say so. Alex Hock was my student, and he played an important role there. And uh, precisely this picture uh, is relevant in understanding higher order freeness and free probability. At least uh, it's okay. All right, so now let's come, yeah, this should work, comes to the 5 to the 4 model. Um, 
quite. Um, this is a changed sensation. So the spec is spectral dimension, and I built uh, out well out of these fractions uh, in, in well integer base. But anyway, um, so okay. Then uh, we have this measure. And, okay, e as before. We have to shift it. This mass minimization. Then uh, take here well regularized uh, trace. It's in the sense which I had previously. Um, no, I know, but uh, you write E plus something you don't write E plus. Uh, well, it doesn't need to be an integer. I know, but uh, if you take the lower transition, the lower transition. Yeah, yes, the lowest. Yes. Lower. So I, uh, I can go slightly below dimension six. I take the lowest one, yes. Good. And um, so this set is so called pre-termination uh, anyway. And um, well, as before, we will get a non equation for the simplest function. And here it is. So good. this is uh, the equation to solve. So uh, here, uh, the right hand side is a striking similarity with the flat tube formula uh, of SMPR. Uh, Again, here we have the nonlinearity, but uh, it's more complicated because now it's a, it depends on two variables. And uh, okay, then one remark, trivial observation: you can interpret this formula also in an integral way, trivial. But it has advantages because now let's we can suppose that this uh, spec the measure function rho naught is further continuous. So let's. Which, of course, in Guinea is not the case, but let's suppose it is fairly continuous. Okay, so and then uh, it took me 10 years to solve this equation, and here is the solution. Okay, we make something strange. Um, we make an ansatz of the function, the Pluton function, in terms of the Hilbert transform of some angle function. And now you uh, declare this angle is uh, minus RD of a negative RD inverse, up to some shifts. Okay, so then, um, okay, our RD will be the status transform of some measure, let's call it uh, rho lambda. And now uh, the key step is the last one, the fourth, uh, there is a relation, namely uh, this uh, rho lambda has to be chosen in such a way that rho naught, our given spectral measure from the previous slide, composed with RD is rho lambda. So, and then uh, the integral equation on the previous slide holds identically. So, um, the beauty is, um, this all, to prove this, you need uh, mathematics of the 18th century. And of course, uh, well, complex analysis. So there's one case which is immediately uh, simple. If rho naught is one, then also rho lambda is one, then this is, there's nothing to do. You compute, uh, R, but this is two dimensional, R2. Uh, this is essentially Z plus log one plus Z, uh, and then the inverse function is the lambda W function and so on, and you solve the two dimensional case. Yeah. Well, you can do it, but you can do it also with analytic, analytic, analytic functions. But there, there's this formula, so z divided by some function of z, and uh, the, this is taken to the power n, and the n is n, n plus first derivative. So, Lambert is, uh, yes, yes. Yes, Lambert is all. yes. Okay, so, okay, now let's do it in four dimensions. Um, in one particular case, namely uh, rho naught of t is t. So just believe me, this is four dimensions. Good, so what you, ex okay, then the problem you have to solve is uh, R4 is x minus, oh, well, let us write here, rho lambda is x minus then this integral of rho lambda. So it's a Fretum integral equation. 
So what you expect is that uh, it will not change much. You expect, uh, well, rho lambda should be the same as, as t itself. Maybe there are logarithmic corrections, but um, okay, this is expect. And now uh, there is probably, or it seems to be a disaster, because if, uh, to make this uh, integral then converge, you need an epsilon here uh, to make this into convergent. And then you can only afford the one minus epsilon downstairs here. And then uh, in total, you think that the, the right hand factor grows like x to the power one plus epsilon. And this wins because of the sign. So whatever lambda is can be arbitrarily small, but at some place uh, you go down. So, and this is our old uh, enemy, the triviality problem, that this function uh, R4 does not exist globally. So this is what you think. You run exactly into the same triviality problem. But uh, the world is nice. The inverse function, yes. Yes. Uh, okay, well. It must be injective to have different inverse. And uh, here uh, you think that, uh, okay, you go down. But it's not the case. Uh, well, with that one, you, you can write down the, well, the solution as a power series, and the miracle is you can sum it. So it involves uh, so called hyper logarithms, so things which appear in quantum field theory, uh, and they can be summed uh, remarkably to the Gauss hypergeometric function. And interestingly, the, yeah. So if now you this expand this in lambda, uh, so in x is easy, but in lambda, and you get here the arc sign, the arc sign arises because it combines the even Riemann zeta values. Somehow they managed to combine to the arc sign. Okay. Uh, okay. And all these uh, typical number theory aspects of quantum field theory you get from this formula. Well, it's not on the whole of R plus. It goes down. Because this, you think the second term wins, uh, you have a maximum, and then, and above, uh, so this gives you a maximum scale until which this is defined. And you cannot reach energies which are higher than the scale. That's what you think. But this function is, is injective. It's injective, so it, it works. And uh, you can amuse yourself and compute the spectral dimension. And here's the, the, this is the most important part of the talk. The dimension goes down. So this interaction brings the spectral dimension from four a little bit down uh, by two arc sine lambda pi over pi. Yes. So, so. Changes everything. Uh, now we are in a situation where we, we have a chance, so we avoid uh, this Eisenbahn Lumina comparison result. We are effectively in dimension lower. And that's uh, because we take into account the interaction in a clever way. Okay. Um, right. So, and then there, there's some, something, some more beauty, I would say. Uh, we can understand all planar cumulants. And they have a striking structure. Uh, so they are uh, fractions. In the numerator, we have products of two point function, and the idea is you order them and, uh, on a circle, because we have one boundary, vertices. And then um, essentially, this produces all uh, non crossing chord diagrams in an even number of vertices. So we have bite of vertices, and they connect, say, orange and blue vertices. And, but then we have more. We have also um, uh, trees inside every pocket and uh, which uh, so the trees determine which of the spectrum downstairs we, we have to take into account. So and the thing is uh, the blue and the orange tray, tree, they are in a well-defined sense dual to each other. And they are also, well, they're Catalan, n many uh, chord diagrams and there are Catalan n, or other n, many planar trees. So this is, okay, a play with Catalan numbers. And uh, so the mark is uh, something extremely similar appears. Yeah. 
Well, this is this is total of all uh, graph of the trees. Catalan is two uh, n divided by n and one by n plus one. But this is not cut out, this is more because we have, uh, we have these trees. So, uh, on the markers, um, extremely similar things appear in free probability. You, you kill uh, or you suppress uh, all crossings, and we have here a similar thing. And uh, so, okay, I, I had a fruitful discussion with Jamie uh, to see whether this is more than an analogy. Uh, so we have to make sense, or I have this my homework to make sense of the trees, but Jamie told me what I should try. Good. Okay, so this for the future, for the next time. And one uh, well, sort of summary at this point. Well, we have completely uh, understood the planar sector, even in four dimensions. And uh, well, this is what you should take home. Um, it is a very bad idea to take the linear theory in four dimensions and perturb around. You should not do this. This, uh, this will fail, as mind you will tell us. What you should do is, uh, uh, also you can't take the all induction, but you can take the planar part of, of the nonlinearity together with the linear part, and this behaves better. It, it goes down in spectral dimension, and uh, yeah, okay, this is what we can do in long geometry, but not in, in the well, on manifold. Okay, so okay, but we are not at the end uh, because uh, this genus expansion does not converge. So um, it could be in principle that the difference between what we have here and the, the full theory is infinite. Of course, it shouldn't be, but this remains to prove. So one would expect uh, that the error between planar and full is of order one over n square, but this is not done. This is the agenda. Okay, um, well, the, uh, Alice Guigny has, uh, has methods to do it. I have to try it. Uh, my remark is that there is something else, namely Boltzmann. So then we have to understand all genera and um, well, maybe I, I run out of time. Uh, I just, uh, okay. So I give you some ideas what, what has been done, what one can do. Okay, now let's look at the five matrices. And then uh, we have to say, what are our WG A1 up to AN? And here's the proposal. Take this, take this partition function viewed as a function of uh, these uh, spectral values E, differentiate, and that's it. And now one has to has to work. Um, it is very very difficult. And um, so these uh, three slides are the result of three years of work. To produce, uh, well, these are what we have to do. We have to sum over the pre-images for this function of x of z. And this was very, very difficult to, to get this equation. And I should tell this is a very condensed notation. So D is the formal, formal derivation, which inserts here another variable. And Y is W01. So differentiating uh, produces W02 upstairs, everything squared, and then you continue. And it's, it's a huge object, which is summarized here. But this is what you expect, and uh, uh, the uh, well observation is that, uh, so for conservation you get here zero, but we don't get zero, we get here other poles. And they destroy the projection property and we are in the blocked situation. So and here that's the same in genus one. Uh, okay, so this doesn't tell much, it's, it's complicated. Here we get another pole at, at zero, maybe I have it here. too fast. Um, right. So we introduce another pole at, at zero. Um, but okay, in principle, this, this can be done. Uh, well, it was a lot of work. And what we see is um, there is no way that one, in, well, one destroys the homomorphicity at, at the branch points. 
So it's completely clear that these uh, so-called mean and quadratic loop equations they hold, and therefore we, we in principle we get explicit formula for all these uh, omega gns. And then okay, one has to study moral solubility, but of course this is uh, far in the future. Uh, the remark is. Uh, in the original formulation uh, by Boris Shadrin, they, um, they consider the curve locally. So they cut off just disk around the ramification points, and then they can independently vary everything inside every disk. And then there's much more flexibility uh, because uh, well, otherwise it's very rigid. Uh, and uh, this freedom they call blobs, but in, in fact there is absolutely no freedom here because we, the, this equation holds globally and uh, well, there is what is, it's described here in, in these terms what, what comes out. You can solve the equation. Okay, then final remark. Um, so I described the IQ, IQ4 model, is there more? And um, the hope is that there, there will be more. And we have one argument that this should be the case. It's uh, joined this uh, guy from Bureau. Um, we know that whatever potential P you take here, built, so D nu E is the previous uh, measure which we already said, and then uh, introduced here artificial time variables, uh, defined set of T. And this set of T is the tau function for the BKP in Kubernetes. So not KP as in normal topological recursion, so it's a reduction to BKP. So it means in particular there are uh, infinitely many uh, well, quadratic relations between the moments, and they are universal. Well, this is, is, should be seen as a formal power series in these T's, so uh, it means it uh, stands for moments of, of the measure. And then, uh, because of these, um, well, the rotor relation uh, for the tau function, you get uh, infinitely many differential equations, and this is the first equation. So it's a relation between, well, certain moments, and there are infinite many of them, and they're universal. So when, okay, here this for even potential, otherwise there are even more terms. And uh, whatever your potential is, you always have such relations. So in, in some sense, uh, there should be more, but this is for the future. I stop. Thank you.